The video you're about to watch has been designed to take you deeper, higher, and wider into Yahweh. Enjoy, and please subscribe. Thank you. I want you to remind yourself where you are right now, that you're in the kingdom of heaven. If you haven't made that shift, your eyes is in what you believe, your eyes is in what you think, it's your imagination. Your soul's eyes is in the enlightenment of your understanding, insight, looking from what is on the inside of you and reflecting it on the outside. What is on the inside comes from your spirit seated in Christ. I want you to picture yourself in the kingdom of heaven. Picture yourself at the throne room. And in worship where we've been right now, that, that, that it's a good place to start. Just to find yourself in his midst. As you bring glory to him, as you breathe in his breath, to breathe in his presence and his glory, begin to understand that in him is revelation, wisdom, knowledge, insight. In him is the kingdom that pours into you. You live from out of the four faces. As the ecclesia today, we are beginning to understand that we need to operate from out of the four faces of Yahweh, the yard, the hay, the bath, the hay. We begin to place ourselves in all of who he is. We begin to understand the dimensions of the apostolic that comes out of him that we need to step into. We begin to understand which is uh, represented by the ox. We begin to understand that we need to step and take out of the, the eagle the dimensions of the prophetic that the Father wants us to be activated and activate in the, in the earth. We begin to understand that his desire for us to stay is to take the... priestly out of the face of the man you get to understand that the capacity that is placed in you as the high priest in Christ and the stepping into the gap for creation for mankind the ability that we have that we love out of him and beginning to understand as we step out of the lion we begin to understand the power the ability that we have as kings in the earth that kingly anointing that we carry as the image of Yahweh, that image of the fullness of the glory that the Father has poured into us, that the ecclesia needs to carry into the earth, and we, the sons and the daughters, we are the ones that need to begin to understand who we are. That we are not just designed to come to meetings every week. We're not just designed to go to church on Sunday. We're not just designed to read the Bible every now and then, and to maybe study the scripture here and there. We are designed to be co ed with Him, to operate from out of His throne, to operate from out of Him, to be understanding the facts that we are living and moving and having our being in Him. His desire for the ecclesia in this time is to be activated. Is to be activated in everything that He designed for us to live out of. So Father, today we want to speak that into place. As the ecclesia comes together, we need to have revelation that there's more to what we have learned, that there's more to what we have received than, 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 than the I and me. You have desired to pour into us multitudes of revelation. And now that we have begun to step out as spirit beings into the kingdom of heaven, you are beginning to release to us and reveal to us these secrets. And it is incredible. It is to change the face of the ecclesia. It is to change the face of the earth. Creation has been waiting for sons. And now they say, a company of people. Isaiah 2. That is rising up and living out of the mountain of the Lord. Having Yahweh himself speak to us, train and equip us. Father, it is exciting, it is awesome. We thank you, we praise you. You're majestic. We just want to honor you and thank you for everything you do. I really feel in my heart that we need to do a mobile court case before we even start this conference. So if you want to, of course there's no pressure, I would like you to stand up. I say stand up really just because we want to step into. So may you standing up be a prophetic action of you shifting into the spirit realm. I say spirit realm because I'm not talking about the kingdom of heaven. The spirit realm was in the kingdom of earth. That's where the mobile court comes into. Because there's several accusations made 
And I know that in your life, you know exactly what I'm talking about. In your life, there's accusations made against you. There's people speaking against you. There's powers, principalities working against what you do, where you add in life, financially, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially. You're being attacked from a demonic force, from a demonic influence in your life that's affecting you in areas of your life. The mobile court is there for us to deal with it. We don't bind Satan, we don't head on head collide with him anymore because our war is not against him. Our war is against the legal access that he has to our lives. So we want to shut access down, we want to cut his ability to come near us off and we begin to understand through the mobile court we get to do this. So right now I want you to, to picture yourself in the court. And I want you to have the understanding of that in whichever way you can perceive it. Yahweh is our judge, our daddy is our judge, which of course immediately makes this court rigged. Satan has no chance. Uh, when we step in, when we step into the court, immediately, whatever the accusation is, it begins to slowly but surely fall apart. It begins to slowly but surely get another fight. We have the seven spirits as our witnesses. We have uh, Yeshua as our advocate. We have the angelic canopy, which is, by the way, by the throne of Yahweh, there's 100 million angels. So right now, right here, in our midst here, because there's no time and space in the spirit, we are averaging 100 million angelic beings. We have the cloud of witnesses, the men, the men in white linen, the saints of old. We have the 24 elders. We have the 22 letters. There is a heaven within this court case that overshadows every demonic force, every power and principality that comes against the ecstasy of the sons yes. and daughters of Yahweh. Yes. That's why we don't operate in fear, we operate in faith. Yes. Yes. So right now we want to call out the, in the accusations made against us. Yes. Now you have to speak this in your own life according to where you act. I want to start with this because there's been accusations made against the spirit schools by Satanists, yes. uh, witches, warlocks, um, much has happened in the spirit and in the schools, which I don't always talk about because it really is, I've noticed that it freaks people out. Even those who have seen it in the spirit has freaked out. And it's nothing for us to freak out over. We have the ability and the power and the, 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 the dominion that the Father has given us to access the victory in the spirit over these things. So right now, Father, we want to speak every demonic power, every demonic force, every principality, every giant, every dragon that has any access, that has brought accusations against, against spirit school, especially in Lafayette, especially in New Orleans, in uh, Picayune, and in, 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 all the other, in any and all of the other schools, that accusations have been made. I know that we preach a, 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 a message that comes from a different kingdom that we have perceived and understand. It's another dimension, a higher level of truth, and it affects and it irritates and frustrates the, um, the satanic realm. And so, Father, we just want to bring all these accusations made against us. The attacks, I felt it, I've seen it in the spirit, I've seen it in the eyes of people that come into the meetings that are not meant to be there, that just causes havoc. And so, Father, we want to bring that in to the courtroom right now. And now, after I've said that, I want you to start bringing in the accusations you've had in your life, whether it's on your health, on your finances, whether it's in your family, in your bloodline. I want you to start bringing all these things into the courtroom. Uh, understand the accusations against you, say, to destroy and destruct you, to bring destruction in your life, to cause you to, and to prevent you from going into the kingdom of heaven, to stop you in your tracks. Yahweh has called us to great levels, to more than what we've perceived up to this point. So the Father wants you to bring, begin to call these demonic entities in. So Father, right now we call in any, every demonic entity that comes against your church, uh, into the mobile court, that's against your people, whether financially, mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, we call them in. <laughs> and as high priest, Father, we step in and stand before you as judge and we, we agree with our accuser. How many understand? The Bible makes it very clear. Agree with your accuser immediately. So we're not trying to fight against what he's saying. He's looking for a fight. We're not going to give him a fight. We're going to legally deal with this in the court today. You guys okay? Yes. So right now, Father, what we do is we, we have agreed with our accuser. Even those accusations made by the, by the witches and, the, witch, uh, and the, the witchcraft within our city coming against the spirit schools, I know they hate what we're doing. <coughs> we agree with them. You should hate what we're doing. But Father, in the same breath, we ask for forgiveness and we repent. We take responsibility. 
And so we want to come and stand before your throne and remind yourself as you stand before the throne of Yahweh or as front of his judgment seat. He is your covering. He is over you. You're in him. You're covered by the blood of Yeshua. So he's judgment and as he judges, Father, we ask for your judgment over everyone in this room right now. Remind yourself. Not that this to bring fear to you, because the judgment the Father brings is judgment to life. It is to propel you, to lift you up, to bless you. It is to enhance you. It is to take you to a deeper level of who you are in Him. It is to show you the power and the glory. It is to reflect in you His image and to take you into the fullness of who you are as a son and a daughter. <coughs> so right now, Father, we want to praise and worship and absolutely honor you for the judgment upon us. For the judgment upon this meeting, for the judgment, Father, that comes upon the spirit schools, Father, as we do this for your glory. Every other ministry, every other church, uh, even this church, Father God, uh, every ministry that's involved. I know there's lots of ministers and preachers and teachers and apostles and, uh, and men and women that's in ministry that comes from these meetings. Lord, I pray and ask you that you will bless them as this judgment is to propel us, to propel our ministries, to take us deeper, higher and wider. Father, I pray that as this judgment takes place, that it will propel our businesses to a higher dimension of financial wealth. I pray, Lord, that we will begin to receive healing in our bodies, even as this judgment takes place. Every sickness, every disease that has been judged under the judgment of Yahweh is blessed and revealed and consumed with His yes. glory. And Father, we know that the accus accuser has come, and now the judgment that you've given us, the exact same judgment has to go to Him. Just remind yourself of something very key here. Because you're in Him, because of the blood of Yeshua, because of the protection of Him being your covering, the judgment is to life. And anything and everything that it comes to this judgment outside of Him is nullified and destroyed. Yes. So right now, the enemy and the accusations made against you as the son and the daughter and the ecclesia, the judgment is the same, but it brings death, nullification, destruction. It brings divorce. It brings restraining orders. It gives the ability and the capacity to shut the access the enemy had in your life. Yes. Yes. So right now, Father, we thank you for that judgment upon the enemy. Every dragon, every giant, every power, every principality, every demonic entity that has worked against your people, in your people. Father, we do not fight against flesh and blood. We love wishes. We love warlocks. Father, we love every other man, woman out there that's even coming against us against this, these schools, against these meetings, Father, that we love the church, we love the religious man, the religious woman, that, that hates the things of the Spirit. Father, we don't care about that. We love the people, but the demonic that leads them, we have had full authority over, and we have dealt with it in the Spirit, Father. In this court, judgment is being uh, legislated as we speak, in its full capacity. So, Father, from this place, we just want to worship you and praise you and magnify you and give you a great praise and honor. Thank you, Father. Thank you, we love you, my king. We love you, Jesus. Glory to your holy name, my king. You're majestic. Woo! Thank you, my king. Thank you, Father. Amen. If you can't sit, you can't sit, you don't want to sit, don't sit. I suggest you do because it's going to be a long. Brandy, do you mind switching off your lights on there by you? Thank you, young lady. Let there be light. Switch them on, you know, it's good. The more light, the better, right? Okay, I just said, uh, baby, would you come stand here with me for one second? She's like, I said to her, I said, baby, don't you want to come stand? She's like, what? Move. Like, I just want to show everybody I really do have a wife. <laughs> she's, she's not made up. This is my baby girl, and I love her very much. And you don't have to say anything. Love you, sweetie. <laughs> I always talk about my wife, and of course, she doesn't come with me to the meetings because we've got the four little kitties. And so I just want to make sure everybody knows I actually do have a wife. It's not a figment of my imagination. <laughs> <laughs> let, it, let it be, let it be there. Okay, so what I'm going to try and do, um, 
We have lots to do. Um, I just want to remind you guys that we are not taking up an offering like we do in a normal meeting. Uh, we don't have normal meetings. So I've got buckets, and the buckets are for trading. So take a portion of the offering you decided to give in your heart. There's no manipulation. But you have to decide what you choose you wanted to give. And the idea is to trade into a message, trade into revelation, trade into something that you don't quite understand but you want more of so that you can have an understanding of it. See, the Father wants sacrifice. That, that's just how it, it operates. If you want to regain what you've lost in any way, fashion, or form, remind yourself that your spirit knows all things. Your spirit is as in its image. So what happens is my spirit needs to bring that revelation back into my soul. Right. And so when I take something that's valuable to me, yeah. I only understand money is something that's valuable to everybody. Yeah. If I had a bunch of bread, bread, you know, loaves of bread, yeah, and I had to give it to the offering, it wouldn't have been as valuable as actual money that I worked for. Although I don't mind bread. I accept knives and guns, and cars and, and houses. What else is there? But um, the idea is that you trade financially into everybody that's gonna be teaching you tonight, or today. Um, it's not to manipulate you out of your funds, it's to, for you to understand that's the value that you put to what's being taught. I can guarantee you're not going to hear this anywhere else. It's just, it's almost guaranteed. And there's nothing to, nothing to break anybody down with. The ecclesia, the church in its normal standard position cannot teach this stuff. Why? Because I, as a, as a pastor, I have to look after the babies. Um, and of course, the pastor is the leader. So everybody stays babies. So look at me with that tone. If there's not an apostolic ministry, apostolic leading in your church with, a, with the, the base of the, the, the prophetic, you're a pastor mentoring a bunch of babies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm speaking to my apostle friend right there, and he's going, yep. And what I mean is the word pastoral is maternal. So the pastor is meant to help and guide the babies into a growing position. Then you have the teacher to come in, then you have the prophet to come in, and you have the apostolic leadership of the church to send, equip, and well, to train, teach, send, and let them go. So what I'm going to try, are you guys okay? I'm running ahead of myself here. <laughs> but I'm not going to try and be as quick as possible with this, because I really want Mike to have enough time to do what he needs to do. Um, you guys realize we have a lot of food, just so I hope you're hungry. <laughs> um, what I was thinking of doing with the first session is just to do a massive recap of what we did for the last five months in the different schools. And it sounds like, well, that's not going to work. That's crazy because usually one recap takes six months. But um, in many of the different schools, after the last meeting we had here, if you remember, it was about six months ago, um, and we just continued with the schools. Some added schools came in. And some of the schools uh, merged with each other. But the idea of the schools is to grow your spirit man. It's not to take you out of your local church. <coughs> really what spirit school is meant to do is to partner with your local church. So that you can grow and mature into who you're destined to be. And uh, the essence of your spirit and the fullness of the glory of Yahweh in you to affect the church that you go to. It's not for you to go tell your pastor what he needs to do. It's not for you to go tell him, well, you need to change the way you preach. You need to change the way you do things. This is no longer how the Lord does things. He's going to slap you. And if he's not going to slap you, he's going to go, okay, well, um, hey, bouncers, get this chick out of here. <laughs> yeah, well, you've went there already, right? So we just need to be wise in this, but understand that it's to equip you, to train you, to get you to the next level. Right? We've gone to some really deep things, and, and I really need you guys to understand the Father's heartbeat for every single one of us in this time is to grow intimately with Him, to get to know Him, to get to love Him, to get to understand Him. And He's, he's given us the ability through the, through, through the torn veil to go in. And I don't want to go into detail regarding the imagination, but it seems like, I know that uh, Darren's going to teach on that today, which will be incredible. I really want you to be there for it. Um, but the imagination is the key to your sight. 
You know, I, I listen to people talk about the imagination and how it's been shut down um, as parents from a very, by parents from a young from a young age. And then it starts going further by the schools, and, and then it just becomes a natural understanding that don't imagine things, stop making stuff up, be real, do what you're supposed to do, and get on with your life. But, but that's the key of the enemy, wanting us to shut down your imagination, because we begin to understand now that it is actually the Father's desire for me to use my, my imagination to be activated in my sight. Because you think you're making something up, but what's really happening is you're looking at your spirit man reflecting what it's doing into your soul. And it's coming in as pictures. How many of you have ever prayed in tongues? Yeah. 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 Even if I do that now, just in my mind, I can feel it. Yeah. 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 It's a heavenly language. Yeah. But we're also beginning to understand that it's not so much a language as what it is, a frequency. If I put my, my, my hand on my, thro on my throat, it, it causes a vibration. And what does a vibration do? A vibration is designed to create. That's what the Holy Spirit did at creation. That's what the Holy Spirit did over Mary. Vibrate. Vibration. Alignment of frequency. Okay, so basically, in, in, we, we started off with, with again going over the crowns, and just to remind you of the very basic things of what we've been teaching here, is that you have to go back into the spirit to regain the things you've lost. You know, I've said this many times, I remember when I came back after the church, it's really just been a blessing to me. I was a young Christian. I was already prophesying, um, seeing dream, having dreams, seeing visions, going into the, the gifts successively, doing really great. But before I knew it, I was slowly but surely nagging and dragging myself back into my old ways, backsliding. Many, many, many years ago, when I came back after four years, and in that time I met my princess wifey. <clears throat> not no, not the, the best things happened in that time, but um, other than my wife, of course. But Coming back, I realized that because of now people talking about my back and saying, yeah, we actually knew he wasn't going to make it, he was going to backslide, he was going to go through all this stuff, I lost all my crowns. So slowly but surely I had to go back. Now that's one way of losing your crowns on purpose as being dumb. But there's other ways. We begin to understand that Satan wants to take from you and if in any way, fashion or form, there's habitual acts of sin in your life, you will lose these things. You will lose the ability to prophesy. You will lose the ability to, to walk in the fullness of the joy. You begin to understand the lack of a revelation in righteousness. You will begin to take uh, understand the Father is slowly but surely reflecting His image on you as you drift away in the things that's meant to propel you. Because Satan takes what's on you because in the spirit they can see what you carry. How many understand? Satan knows what robe you're wearing. He knows whether there's an anointing, whether there's a, 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 crown of, a crown of righteousness, a crown of glory. He understands what you're having on, so he wants to take it from you because it's your value. Right. And so slowly but surely we need to regain back what the enemy has taken. So now that we can, we can understand the fact that we are spirit beings and I can go into the spirit. And by going physically in the spirit, understanding that I work against the timeline because as spirit beings we are not limited to time and space. So I can go back into my past and I can see what went wrong and what needs to change, where I've lost what crown, go into the mobile courts, deal with what the enemy has taken from me and regain it so I can again lay it at the feet of Yahweh at the sea of glass, reminding yourself that whatever I lay at his feet, he multiplies back to me. That's why you cannot outgive Yahweh, especially in the spirit, because in the spirit it's a little bit easier to give. <laughs> well, actually, it's not. I remember, I remember the father saying to me. Um, matter of fact, he didn't even say anything to me. He, he asked me into the kingdom of heaven, and I was in a specific place, and um, all I saw was all these fruits, like baskets of fruits. And I realized this has been the works that I've put in over the last six years. So it's a year later, so now it's seven, but it was six at that point. And it's all the things that I've done in the spirit. All the dragons I've slain, the diamonds, rubies, gold, my, my, my fruits of the spirit that's grown. So much has changed in my life because of this new revelation the Father has given me. And I remember and knowing that it's in bas baskets in front of me, I'm going to have to give it up. I'm going to have to trade with it. 
And I couldn't think of anything that could possibly be valuable enough for me to trade with because I could see what my fruits has been over the last six years. Things that, that has changed, things that needs to get elevated. But slowly but surely, as I got to that place of giving, I realized every time I give to the Father, He just multiplies back. I remember going on vacation with my family to Colorado, and I didn't really want to go. I'm not, I said to my, my, my subconscious mind tells me, you didn't come to America for vacation. You know, it's ministry, it's work, that's why we're here. And um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't mind going. I knew it was going to be fun, but in going, in the spirit, I remember the Father taking me to a place and He stripped me of everything I had on. Now that's kind of, that was very depressing to me because everything was changed. He's given me a different armor. He's given me a sword. I, I have had mantles of, of glory, fire, um, intimacy, placed and love placed onto my shoulders, uh, clothing in what I've carried in the spirit and the things that I've done that's added to who I am in His kingdom. And so as he started stripping me of all this, I was, I was freaking out in my heart. I thought to myself, what did I do wrong? Why is this happening? Why are you doing this, Lord? And he said, well, I have to take what you have now so that I can take you to the next level. Yeah. I have to take what you have. We have to, you have to lay it down. I mean, he didn't take it. He need, I needed it to lay it down. You have to lay it down so that I can trade back to you the next level of stuff. Because what you've done in this level, the next level, you're not going to be able to use any of the stuff you have with you now. You know, and I, 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 I figured this out through watching my kids play with their video games. You know, what they, the, 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 next, the next level does not, the, the previous stuff that you had in the previous level doesn't help you for the next level. You have to get a bigger gun, you have to get more bullets, you have to get different armor. Everything has to change because there's a higher level of attack coming against you and there's so much more that needs to be done. There's a higher dimension of revelation getting poured into you. And of course, yes, the revelation gets added and of course, everything you've learned up to that point, you've gained. But this is not stuff that you can go read in a book and say, well, okay, I want to know a little bit more about this level I'm at right now. It's engagement, it's intimacy, it's loving on Him, taking back what the enemy has stolen. Of course, we begin to understand that for me to have revelation and even the crowns, I have to walk in the kingdom of heaven with the seven spirits. How are you guys doing? Now this should be a recap for most of you. If you're sitting there and you're going, what is this guy talking about? This doesn't even sound like Christianity. Just, just hold on to your chair. Okay, everything will kind of make sense at, at a later stage. But the idea is that we start understanding that as sons of Yahweh, we have to walk with the seven spirits. We look at um, Esther or Hester. Esther. <laughs> and, and she was given seven handmaidens. To do what? To train her how to be a queen. Right? So we need to understand that's just a, a, a type and shadow of we need to be trained to be kings. I mean, we've never been in the kingdom of heaven, uh, according to my natural perception. I'm going to understand in the same breath that we're ancient beings. Uh, we're ancient beings. That's why my spirit can go into the kingdom of heaven and have a, a whole uh, day of deja vu. Where it comes back and says, but I, I know this stuff. I know this stuff. And your soul's going, where's it in the word? Show me in the word. And your spirit goes, we've been there. I've experienced this. I know the seven spirits. I know what God's doing. I've, I've engaged with the angels. And your soul's going, well, I don't understand that. I've never heard of that. That's never been taught. It's not in my belief system. Let's just try and kick it out. That's why your spirit has to overshadow your soul and your body. That's why your spirit's locked and sealed in the Holy Spirit, in Christ, in the Father. And it has to be overshadowing your soul and your body at all times. As soon as your soul overshadows, you're gonna, the glitch is going to start. And you're going to go like this. Because your soul cannot perceive the stuff. Not yet. So the idea of the seven spirits is that we engage them. And I've, I've gone into detail with it over several times. I don't want to go into too much detail right now. If you don't understand it, I have 600 hours of teachings on YouTube. 600 hours of, of teaching. That's literally 617 uh, messages on YouTube for free for you to go and watch. I would urge you to trade if you want the revelation because otherwise it's just going to be information. And you know, I look at Rebecca because myself and Rebecca has sewed into uh, Ian Clayton's teachings over the last couple of years and we've combined the teachings. Now at the moment I've got about 68 of these teachings that cost a fortune between the two of us. 
but that's trading into and I'm getting it and she's getting it. And it's not about trying to listen to one message a hundred times. It's about understanding the fact that you have to give something precious into it so that you can gain. You go to a shop, you have to buy something. You don't just get the milk and run. You can. I wouldn't suggest you do that, but you can. Right? So it's okay. That's why I said there's no obligation, but it's there. Go, go back into it, listen to it. As a matter of fact, uh, get some of Ian's teachings, get some of Justin's teachings, get some of, of Stephen McGee. He makes it simple. He's got such a great way of teaching. You know, you've got uh, Jane Schroeder. She is a phenomenal young woman, and they're teaching all this stuff. Go listen to some other men and women. They, they teach the same stuff so you can have the insight. But the seven spirits, and, and there was a season there where I was teaching the seven spirits at New Orleans, I was teaching it in, uh, in Slidell, and I was going to different states to teach it there. Because there was just a time where the followers have to be aware of what they're doing. They are going to and fro, seeking for sons and daughters to ignite in the kingdom, to establish his sons, to establish his kings. So engaging them, and we need to understand this, because we've got this vibe in our perception, if you engage something in the heavens, you're worshipping it. You cannot worship anything in the kingdom of heaven. They will not allow it. They won't even understand what you're doing. Now, of course, you cannot go into the heaven wanting to worship. If you go into the kingdom of heaven in your perception and you're worshiping something other than God, you're not in the kingdom of heaven. You're in the spirit realm and you're being affected by a demonic entity. So it's impossible to go into the kingdom of heaven and to worship Satan, to worship Yahweh, after to worship an angel, to worship one of the seven spirits, they won't allow it. But the idea is the engagement you give is to train and equip you, to establish you in the revelation of knowledge that you need to be placed into the name, into the position that you're called to. Right? So every time I engage with wisdom, she brings me to a higher level in him. Or everything that she gives, everything that's in her is to propel me. And the propelling me that she aligns in my being is to take my intimacy to a higher level in Him. To get to know Him more. To get to love Him more. To understand who I am in Him and how do I get to the place and the position that He's called me to. The same with might. The same with, with, with counsel. The same with understanding. The same with fear of the Lord. The same with every one of the seven spirits. They are there to bless and encourage and propel you. Right? Guys, I'm, I'm touching base. I don't know. I'm probably jumping all over the place and you're going. But just remind yourself that we, we, we've been going at some of the schools for five years. And so by this time, if you haven't watched some of the videos, your homework is to engage it. It's to sit and listen to what's being taught most of the time. And I know that, that you guys can understand. I remember someone saying to me that no one can talk that fast. It is impossible. It has to be of God. You, know, you can't even pronounce the words as fast as what's coming out of your mouth. It has to be a supernatural thing. It's not always like that, but I know when the Father uses me as an oracle. You know, when I have a whole bunch of notes and I never use it, not once in a whole hour that only feels like 10 minutes, I'm speaking as an oracle. And, I, and it's recorded. <laughs> so I go back to my videos several times to listen to what I said. <laughs> But I know that the Father wants us to begin to engage again in the seven spirits. And every time I go around to engage, it's a higher level. And of course, I teach in the schools uh, at several occasions on the seven spirits. And every time I've taught, I've taught out of a higher level of revelation regarding who they are. Because you go in a spiral uh, walk with them. So every time you get back to wisdom, you are at a higher level. Every time you walk through going with all seven spirits, you get back to wisdom, you're at a higher level. It's all spiral to go higher, deeper, wider into Him. It's His desire to teach you everything you need to know. You know, it's, it's not about your sickness and disease. It's not about your depression. It's not about your frustration, your irritation, your anger. It's not about the sins you struggle with in the earth. It's not about the pornography. It's not about whatever you're into. It's not about that. Yahweh does not see it. No, I know nobody wants to hear that. No, no, no. He does and He hates it and He will judge you for it and thou shall die. But he does not see it like that because he looks at you through the eyes of Yeshua. And the Bible makes that very clear. It's the blood that covers. It, it literally hides your sin from him. He cannot see it. So that's not his focus. That's your focus. And that's Satan's focus. And of course, 55% of the church is focused. 
But when I begin to understand that's not his focus, I take my focus and I put it somewhere else. Because in the earth, I need to put my focus on the fullness of Yahweh because I live out of the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. I've been trained and equipped by the seven spirits. They sent me on assignments in the earth to do certain things because there's an establishment of who I am and who he wants me to be that needs to be placed in the earth. Uh, I need to know who I am. I need to know what I need to do as a son. And I cannot have that which I do affect me because it's not what I do, it's who I am. And that doesn't give you a license to go crazy. You have to understand. That, and, and that the idea of spirit school, the idea of going into the heavens is that you present yourself to him as a living sacrifice. Right. So that by the time you're in a meeting like this, you no longer struggle with all these things. Now if you still do, there is mercy and there is grace. This is a time of holiness, but not the holiness the church understands. The holiness of the church is, well, it's a duty list of this, 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 and this. And if you're still doing this, 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 and this, then you don't know. You can't enter into that, that, and that. But that's not the way the Father works. It's not the way he sees it. Right? We go into the kingdom of heaven to what? To get holy. But it's not the holiness that we see. It's not sin-driven holiness. Or the lack of sin holy drivenness. It is stepping into his presence and being covered by his holiness. Being covered by who he is. It's like putting a glove on my hand. I become holy unto God like the glove becomes holy unto my hand. I step into him. He steps into me. We overshadow each other. But his glory overshadows me and I can no longer continue in my act actions of sin. Right, right. And I begin to understand what he means when he says to the pure, all things are pure. Right, right. Because I might have no record of sin. Right, right. As we go deeper and higher into his kingdom, we begin to understand that the things we do that was taught to be sin is no longer in my understanding or revelation. I remember the Father taking me into the kingdom of heaven in a high place, a whole different dimension. I believe that it was a different kingdom within the kingdom of heaven. Um, I remember stepping in and there was nothing. It was just this massive white room. It was beautiful, phenomenal. I can't even express what I saw because the things I saw there is not on the earth. So it's not something in my remembrance or something that I can look at and relate to. Uh, I still go in as, as, as many times as I can to get more information out of it. But what the father basically says, he had me on the back of my neck very gently and he said, my son, there's too much for us to do for you to still play around. There's too much written on your scroll. Now that you've got it, now that you know what you need to do, it needs to be done. There's too much activated. There's too much holding on for you. And I, I never understood that until recently. I was standing over shadowing a, a specific region within a couple of different states. And the father taught me to do certain things and I knew exactly what the what I needed to do and how I needed to do it. When I did it, 12 beams of light fell into place. The chandelier that I thought the dragon was holding onto was a crown. And because of what I did, they could step into place. 12 lights was the different men, sons and daughters within the earth that was waiting for me to do what I needed to do so that they can do what they needed to do. Once they could do what they had to do, it was ascended in and there was governance established in the region. But I was scaffolding because I had squirrel. <laughs> so we need, to, we need to get focused, right? And that's why the seven spirits are there. Because they bring you and take you back onto track. They lead you back into the place where you squirrel. Because that's a problem for everybody. I know it's not just me. You want to focus on something in the heaven? What am I eating tonight? <laughs> and it doesn't have to be a squirrel. Tummy talks. <laughs> yeah. Did I switch the stove off? It's all the lights in the house. Up. And the father's like going, hey, I'm going to go with you. Focus. <laughs> My wife does that every now and then. Hey, I'm talking to you. Listen. Sorry, baby. <laughs> so in the earth... As sons and daughters, the Father's desire for us is to really understand the seven spirits. It's been taught and even translated in some of our newer translations in the Bible that it's seven attributes, attributes of Holy Spirit. But we need to begin to understand if you study the Bible in its original form, you will see that there's seven spirits that's at the throne. Now just to burst your bubble, Holy Spirit is not at the throne. Right. Holy Spirit's on the throne. Amen. So the Spirit of the Lord is not Holy Spirit. 
because the Spirit of the Lord is one of the seven spirits at the throne. Right. So it's another, now you say, well, why would God want other spirits? He is the only spirit. Well, you're a spirit. Right. Satan is a spirit. Right. Every angelic being is a spirit. Right. The 24 elders are spirits. The four living creatures are spirits. Right. <laughs> it's, it's governance established. Seven plus three. It's the bank then. It's, it's the, the understanding of the governance of heaven. They run. Wisdom was with creation. With, with Yeshua at creation. Right. With might and understanding and counsel. They, they work together within all of the heavens. And that's why they're teaching you. Because you're the one that's supposed to co with him. Right. All of creation is waiting for you. Right. So the seven spirits are key. And, and, and I say, well, how do I engage with the seven spirits in your heart? Your spirit goes. Now, I've never, I've never physically heard a conversation that I had with, the, with one of the seven spirits. But when I engage with them, it's a meditation, it's an understanding of going in and spending time in the classroom where they teach. Nowadays, there's more than just you in the class. People are getting this stuff all over the earth. These rooms are getting filled up with students, sons and daughters wanting to learn more. It's not so much an audible message. It's all of a sudden coming out of an encounter and you're like... I feel heavy in my spirit because there's new revelation. Then when you open your mouth to speak to friends and family regarding what you engage, all of a sudden there's a ball of revelation exploding inside of you. And then they wonder, well, what, what, he doesn't teach me anything. I've never heard him say anything. Well, just talk. It's that activation. It's something you have to actually do. You can't keep it in. Then, of course, we also begin to understand the value, and we did some of it just now, but you have to engage the seven spirits. We engage the seven spirits to regain everything the enemy has stolen from us. It's the process most of us have gone through in, in this side of the veil called um, discipleship, called uh, deliverance, right? Just to deal with our issues and our things. But in deliverance, many times, out of ignorance, the bloodline gets cut off. How many understand that? Has anybody ever experienced a bloodline getting cut off? Reconnect that bloodline. Okay, bloodline cannot be cut off. It can be realigned and it can be blessed, but if it's cut off, you're being, that you're being robbed. Right, because every bloodline has significant glory that's meant to flow down. Satan could have in some way, fashion or form, get hold of that bloodline through acts of sin, uh, ignorance, things we do, things that in our DNA happened in our, in our um, generations before us. But we don't cut off a bloodline. So this blood, these bloodlines need to be reestablished because there's blessings and finances and revelation and insight that needs to come through your bloodline to you. And it needs to go from you to your, to your children. And it's much like when the, uh, the high priest walks through the veil. I don't understand. He had to physically walk through the veil. Not, not open the veil and then walk through like you would do through a curtain. There was no entrance. He would try to relocate from one side of the curtain to the other. Because no one could go into the Holy of Holies but him. And if he went in there and he wasn't completely sinless, he would die. But as he walks through the veil, he gets to walk through every revelation and insight and knowledge, every encounter, every relationship that the previous priest had before him. Because their garments were sewn onto the veil. That's why it eventually, by the time it torn, weighed like 400 kilograms, which is about 800 to 1,000 pounds. And they couldn't lift it up. It was too heavy. It was about, uh, they say, uh, 30 centimeters, about 15 inches wide. Which means if a normal man walks through it, it would cover his complete body. But it's like that. I, I walk through my bloodline. I get to encounter all the experiences, all the um, encounters, all the relationships, all the stuff that my previous bloodlines had with Yahweh. So if I don't, if I cut that off, it's stolen from me. That's why it's a good idea to go back into your timeline and reconnect the bloodline. And of course, this is stuff that's revealed to you in engaging with the seven spirits. Um, that's why we can regain our crowns, because the Father wants you to be seen in the spirit. Satan needs to look at you and go, Oku, I need to get out of here. Right? Now I say that, but also remind yourself that many times Satan has the right to hold on to things in our lives because of decisions we make. Secrets we keep, things we hold back. And then authority does not overshadow your right to choose. 
It means I can't cast out a demon out of somebody that's holding on to something that they want. And it's not on purpose. It's not because, well, that's what I want. It's ignorance. And it's a lifestyle, a lifestyle of, well, that's all I know. So you can't take this from me. So we have authority over all evil spirits, but they have the ability to, well, I'm not going anywhere because I've got the right to be here. And it's in the in kingdom of heaven where the revelation of who and what needs to be reflected into what area you have legislative power over um, can come into place. That's why it's key for us to go in there. It's key for us to understand. And it's the Father's desire for us to engage in the kingdom of heaven through the veil um, with the seven spirits and to, and, to, and to understand all that he has for you for right now. I can't teach you that. How many understand that? I mean, I'll give you the very basics of what I've walked in, and I'm sure everyone else is going to teach today is going to do the same thing. It's just the very basics. But when you go and you receive what you need for where you're at right now, you know, we begin to understand the value of the mobile court and how you can literally take anything you are having problems with. Every time you would have bound Satan, it's a good time to go into the court. And I would urge you not to do that. If you, you know, what I, what I do nowadays is I would, I, would, I, would, um, I would cut him off from a situation. You know, I, I would, but I don't bind him anymore. What I do is I'd say, okay, well, I know what your accusation is. I see what you're doing. Let's go to the court. Because I need to shut down his legal access. There's legal access somewhere. Now, he doesn't have legal rights. He doesn't have no legal right over me, but he has legal access because of either those in my bloodline or things that I do. And of course, there's sense of omission, things we do that we don't even know that's wrong. And he's got a legal access to us in some way, fashion, or form. And let me tell you something, he's a legalist. He's going to find a loophole, and once he finds it, he's going to come in to kill, steal, and destroy. <coughs> now, we understand the mobile court deals with that immediately. It cuts that off. So that we don't have to worry about that in our lives. But that's something you need to constantly find yourself doing. Grow in the courts as quick as you can. And it's pretty simple. We've had a court case just now. And the idea is to agree with your accuser. Now we don't like that. But have you ever seen the movie Smurfs? <laughs> I know that's very spiritual. Hallelujah. Praise God. <clears throat> but I remember at the very beginning of the, the scene. It's the latest one that came out. So it's like a cartoon, right? So it's just a cartoon. Some of the others had real people in, but this was a cartoon in, in one. But right in the beginning, they are playing and they're basically being naughty. They're doing things that they really were not supposed to do and not allowed to do according to Papa Smurf. Oh. Right. right. So Papa Smurf catches them doing this and he's very, very upset. But they weren't finished. They still wanted to do something because uh, the little girl Smurf, what's her name? Pretty Smurf or girly Smurf or blondie Smurf? Smurfette. Okay, well, Smurfette, she saw something in the woods and she realized that it was another type of Smurf. So she wanted to go back, but now Papa Smurf wants to ground them. So what she does is he's furious. He's screaming and shouting and she's like, you're right. And he's like, uh, what? So she just agrees with the accusations he's making. Yes, you're right. We're so sorry. We were wrong. We should never do it again. And we ask you to forgive us. And he's like, stop dead in his track. That's kind of what happens when we agree with the accuser. I know that's the best example you've ever heard in your life, I understand. <laughs> but that's what happens when you have little kids, right? So we, we need to agree with our accuser. And I've heard people say, I will not agree with my accuser. And I understand that. I don't want to agree with him. He's a pain in my butt. I don't like him. I actually don't like anything about him. I don't even like being near him. I don't enjoy any part of his presence. Nothing that he has to offer is something I want to engage into. But I have to agree with the accusations made. <clears throat> Why? Because it nullifies him. It gives him to a place where I wanted a fight. He didn't give me a fight. You son of a mother, let's go. So I can step back and say, okay, now I'm going to ask the Father to forgive me because you're bringing an accusation against me. I'm going to ask the Father to forgive me. He's going to forgive me. I'm going to repent, which means I'm not going to engage in what you have anymore. I'm going to change the way I think, and then I'm going to have the Father judge me because I'm in him, so his judgment is to life. But just remind yourself, Satan, <laughs> you're going to get judged after your accusation has been made, and that judgment is to death. Nullified, destroyed. Then I'm going to get papers. And uh, the papers are going to tell me that you are not just nullified, but you have no right in any way, fashion, or form. The access has been denied. So you and every power and principality that has been on my case in this specific area is shut down. 
And we can do this in every area of our lives, at all time, at any given time. Yes. You read like Ezekiel 10, Ezekiel 1 and Ezekiel 10, you understand about the mobile court, a mobile throne that comes down. Why? Because the accusations can't be made in the heavens. We need to understand this. Satan does not have any right to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Now when we talk about Satan's in the spirit realm, it's not the kingdom of heaven. The earth has a spirit realm. And this is the place where the church has war for the last 500 years. <coughs> That's why we've experienced the opposite of what the word of God says. So we have experienced that the, the gates of heaven shall not prevail. Now that sounds terrible, because how can you say something like that? The church has done great work, yes. But every time we've done something great, we get beaten up for it. That's right. How's that work? If we've done something great, how can we get beaten up? So we beat him up, and then he comes and beats us up. That's right. That makes sense. No, he might beat you up. Dude, you're not going to move. You're going to be in hospital. That's the end of you beating anybody up. Well, I kicked your butt. That's it. But, but for some reason, we've done it in a, in a manner that the Father has not quite given us the ability to have full success in. Right. Because that's not what it was meant to be like from the very beginning. Right. Now, yes, I have authority against Satan and I can tell him to go in the name of Yeshua, but not in the name spoken, being right. in the position, right. being fully immersed in him. Right. So I speak from out of him, right. operating out of his four faces. Right. But when I have things come against me like we have had in our lives, I don't just speak to Satan and come against him, try and fight with him, try and give him a fight. I go to the court. Yes. deal with it there. Now we also begin to understand we are chancellors and to grow into the court system of heaven where we become chancellors, we become dimensional um, operators in different sections of different nations and different states as the Father allocates these areas to us as spirit beings from what's written on your scroll. So I, you need to begin to also understand the courtrooms of heaven which is not the mobile court. It's not where Satan makes accusations. It's where an accusation has been brought to a city or a group of people, or a um, tectonic plate, or different alignment in planets, or something in the atmosphere that we can't particularly do anything about. Um, not just storms, but something higher than that. And that's when we go into the court system to deal with certain things. We have taught on the courts, you get many different courts. Um, it's very difficult to really have a great revelation regarding these courts, but as you continue to grow into it, go deeper, there's intense revelation. I've been sitting in one court for almost two years with very minimal revelation regarding what's going on in there. But slowly but surely I'm gaining enough information for me to actually do something in that court. Some courts you have to sit in for a minimum of a year before you can do anything out of it. Some courts you can't go into unless you've led someone to maturity. I remember being in a meeting and I felt an extreme shift in the spirit and I stepped into a courtroom I've never been in and I said, Lord, I thought I didn't have access to this room. And he said, you led someone to maturity. Now, I understand also we've got different levels of maturity. Right? My 12-year-old is mature for a 12-year-old. But it's immature for a 15-year-old. And it's completely manure for a 21-year-old. He might think he's mature, <clears throat> more mature than what he really is. Most of the time, we think we're more mature than what we really are. If I think of myself... I'm going at this at a rate that's blowing my mind. But in reality, I'm seven, year old, seven years old in this, and I'm really just touching that and squirrel. I know that that squirrel affects me greatly. And I know that it affects the ecclesia greatly. <clears throat> because we're busy focusing on something the Father is revealing to us, and then before we know it, we're stepping out. Life continues. Then you want to step back in, but then you struggle to step back in because you, the, the, the struggle or the, the, the stumbling blocks in your life is formed and beginning to say, well, I, always, I never really go in as deep as I want to. Maybe it's because I, I can't really go that deep. No, it's because of squirrel. So we need to kind of focus and try and go deeper. I, I did a great teaching the other day, um, <clears throat> on Thursday actually, on the stumbling blocks. It's things that prevent us from going into the kingdom of heaven. Things that prevent us from going back in. Just small little things that we lack to engage. <clears throat> so I'll actually go listen to that. I think it's on, 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 on um, YouTube already. How are you guys doing? Okay, so the idea <clears throat> is to really just continue to listen to these messages and go back into it. I remember when I just started with Ian Clayton, which I love and honor obsessively. <clears throat> I had to go listen uh, several hundreds of times to get back. Because you have to change a belief system. 
You have to change what you were taught over, for under, over many years. And what we were taught was not wrong. Don't misunderstand me. If we are just receiving a higher level of truth. Now, it doesn't mean that the previous level wasn't truth. It still was a great measure of truth. But um, I can't stick to teaching my kids one plus one, two plus two, three plus three. It's algebra and all kinds of other mathematical equations that you can solve, and it's still math. So we have really touched the basics of our faith, and now the Father is bringing in mysteries and secrets, and we have wanted the, 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 the easy way out. Come, let, come make a line, you know, I have no problem with that, but come make a line, and let me lay hands on you, and I will give you everything I just spoke of. It. Everything you want, I will bless you with a mantle of pr the prophetic. Uh, no. I've had, that, I've had the most incredible man of God lay hands on me. And it didn't just happen for me. It's no takeaway. There is no takeaway. It might feel great. It might be a good idea. But you remind yourself, you have to work for what is in you. You have to activate. If you're a prophet, it's not just going to happen. You know, wake up one morning, God says the Lord God Almighty. <laughs> it's not going to happen like that. You have to work at it. You have to engage in His kingdom. You have to become His best friend. It's the same with the apostolic. You don't wake up an apostle, an apostle one day and you're going to be sending out people all over the earth. It's a progressive dimension of growth, and that's just this side of the veil. That side of the veil is realms and dimensions and kingdoms that we haven't even touched base on yet. You know, your father's desire for you is to grow in the Melchizedek order. That's what happens beyond the veil, not this side of the veil. He wants you to understand your sonship. I'm going to close with this. You start with understanding your sonship. You want to shift and align into the revelation regarding who you are as king in his kingdom. Right. You want to grow into the idea behind you being a high priest. No, but Jesus is my high priest. Okay, but Jesus is my example. Right. And if he's a high priest, then I must be a high priest. What does that do? How does that work? Do you go into the mobile court to pray for a nation? The judgment to life has to go through you. Because it can't go straight to the nation. It will kill people. Yeah. Because many of the nation's people that you pray for is not under the covering of Yahweh. Right. That's why I step in as a high priest where the judgment goes through me through the blood of Yeshua. Therefore the judgment through me is to life. And then the judgment can go from me through me to the people. Right. That's what the high priest would do in the Old Testament. He steps in into the Holy of Holies, judgment comes through him, and when the judgment goes through him and he survives it, right. which means there's no sin in his life, then the, the, the sins of the nation is forgiven for another year. Right. So we need to begin to understand. Then of course you want to begin to understand the shift into being an oracle. That when you speak, you speak because you're the body. That's a whole nother place to operate from. This side of the veil, we are the bride. That side of the veil will be on the body. That's a different place. The, the bride can do whatever she wants to. <laughs> and of course, you know, I love my, my bride loves me. She doesn't just go around doing crazy stuff. You know, she does things that's in the sphere of our love for each other. You know, and, and that's brilliant. And of course, I do the same thing. But she can still do whatever she wants to. She has her own choice, her own free will to do whatever she feels in her own self to do. But the body is a whole different, my arm can just go now. My arm can just do whatever it wants to. If it does, there's something wrong with me. I need a doctor. You know, my leg's just going. I'm like, uh, what are you doing, dude? I remember getting an electric fit. I've only had one for my entire life. I was uh, 18 years old, turning 19. I was still in school. And I remember working the whole day. And uh, we were sitting on the truck, driving through uh, parking lots, putting out metal poles and throwing it on the truck. And I'm sitting on the truck and my head goes like that, completely out of its own. And I'm like, I was weird. Then I started getting all dizzy and feel like weird. And then my head would go like that again. And I'd be like, that is so weird. Because I have no control over what my head's doing. It's crazy and it would do that again. Eventually I ran in front of that car and I stand in front of this car. As I wanted to start pulling the poles out, my head started doing this, just slowly. And I'm like, what is going on? All of a sudden, it just went crazy. And I wake up in a helicopter with someone trying to stick a pen down my throat. And that was weird. And how many of you understand that is involuntary to the body? Right? And the body doesn't function like that. There's something wrong with you. Something going wrong in the brain. Something's not, something's not aligned. 
So when I'm beyond the veil, I'm operating as the body. I only do what he aligns in me to do. I don't do my own thing. That's why I present myself in the kingdom of heaven as a living sacrifice. Okay, slip my throat. Yay. Cuts off my head. Right. Opens up, takes off my skin. Cleans out the innards. Cuts me open, takes off the innards. Inner, innards. Cleans it out, takes off my legs. Then he presents me to the Father. You know, I'm, a, I'm the body. I have no free will. Right. Well, that's not right. The Bible says we have our own free will. Beyond the veil, his desires is my desires. His will is my will. His ways is my ways. Because I live in him, moving in him, I have my being in him. He reflects all of who he is in me. Right. Exciting, right? Yes. Let's stand. You guys okay? Yes. I want to I wanna just throw some things out there. If you are writing out a check today in any way, fashion, or form, during the day, uh, write it out to Gustave Leroux. If you are trading, um, these buckets are for trading. Remind yourself that in, in the time of teaching, um, the ones that's teaching in the specific time, they will get the trades. So right now, it'll be myself and Mike, you're trading into our messages, we'll get the trades and we'll divide the, the, the offering together, right? The same will go up and right through the day. At the end of the evening, I'm gonna take up an offering for Spirit School, um, just because there's some things that obviously needs to be paid for the venue and just uh, stuff that needs to be set in place. Um, love you guys, you guys are really blessed me. I thanks for everybody that's coming, uh, it looks really good. Um, I want to do an activation prayer for everything that I just spoke of, the things that's recapped on, and then we'll get uh, and see what, what we do from there. I want to take a 10 minute break, bathroom break, and then uh, Apostle Mike's going to come in and he's going to do his teaching. After he's done, we're going to have, do have lunch, okay? So get hungry. hungry if you are thirsty, there's some waters, in the, um, waters and tea and coffee, so when you have a 10 minute break now, I'm just going to pray. And then after that, we can put to go and get some water, some drinks, and then we can come back. Don't bring any uh, uncapped drinks into the sanctuary. Right? right? Father, we just want to glorify and magnify your name. Uh, and right now, Lord, everything that's been spoken, I know that your desire for us is to engage with the seventh spirit. So I want to activate that in the hearts of your people with desire to go in. I want to know more. I want to go in. I want to experience yes. this, Father. So I know that it starts with desire. It starts with, with the burning crave for more, a deeper level of intimacy with you. So I ask you, Father, that you will ignite that in the hearts of everyone here tonight, Father God, today. I pray, Father, you will expand our understanding, expand our, our perception regarding things and how everything we just heard needs to fall into place. It goes into your spirit. It gets downloaded into your soul, and slowly but surely it affects you so that you can change the way you believe, change the way you think. That's called, that's called repentance. So in that act of repentance, you change the way you think regarding the situations and the, the way you believe things previously. So Father, I ask that you'll activate that in the heart of your people. Bless this day, Father. I love everyone in this room with love I can't express in the natural, Lord, and I thank you for their faithfulness, Lord, they are my students that I love greatly. And I want to thank you, Father, for their, their active involvement in the schools. Uh, it's, it's, it's always exciting, it's always awesome to see how they grow, how they mature, and it's just incredible. I thank you and praise you, Lord. Bless everyone in this room, and may this day propel everyone to a higher level. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.